folks, in this video I would like to talk about variation. There are two types of variation. There's direct variation and there's inverse variation. So the first thing I want to define is direct variation. And basically what that means, if you have two values that are related, say this first example, sales and earnings. So you know those are definitely related. The more you sell, the more you earn, right? That's what's called a direct variation. If one value goes up, that makes the other value go up as well. Also down. So if your sales go down, your earnings go down as well. And that's still direct variation. In other words, they go in the same direction. Another example of direct variation, you see the second bullet, number of hours you work and the amount of your paycheck. If you're paid by the hour, then the more hours you work, the higher your paycheck. On the other hand, the less hours you work, the lower your paycheck. Again, if they go in the same direction, that's called direct variation. They, they're related directly. One goes up, the other goes up. Third example is the speed of your car and the distance you travel. Clearly, you know, the faster you go, the farther you go. Um, one that you don't think about all the time, weight on a spring and the distance the spring stretches. So just picture a spring in your mind, okay? Just, you know, a regular spring. You hang something on the end of it. Well, the heavier the thing you hang, the more that spring is going to stretch out, right? Again, that's direct variation because the more weight, the more it stretches. Um, another example, the more often in-person socializing, the higher the risk of a virus. Of course, you know what I was thinking about when I made that example up. All these are direct variation. Now, how does this work? The formula for direct variation is right here. I've circled it, but the place you start is the first variable mentioned equals k. That's called the constant of variation because they don't, they don't go up the same amount, right? So you have this multiple this constant it's just a number it's not a variable it's just a number times the other variable now these variables might not be called x and y they might be called you know r and d or something like that you'll see examples in just a minute but direct variation is multiplication that's what you, i want you to think about is you multiply the the k the constant of variation times the x value Okay, now next I'm going to go ahead and define inverse variation. That way you have an idea of both of them before we do any problems. So now let me define inverse variation for you. Notice that the, in the green box, if x and y are related by y equals k divided by x to the n, that means y varies inversely with the nth power of x, and k is still called the constant of variation. Now, here's what I want you to know about inverse variation. If you have two values that are related and one value goes up, but that makes the other value go down or vice versa. One value goes down and makes the other value go up. That means they're inversely related. And I think you'll feel better about that when I give you some examples. So first bullet, it says the number of people working a job. So picture like cutting the grass, right? The more people that have lawnmowers to cut a particular yard, the less time it's going to take to cut, cut the yard, right? So that means the number of people working goes up, the time the job takes goes down. See how they're oppositely related? And obviously the opposite would be the case too. If the number of people go down, you have less people to do the job, then it's going to take longer to get the job done. Another example is the speed driven to a destination. So how fast you drive somewhere, right? Well, the faster you drive somewhere, the less time it takes to get there. So notice, if the speed goes up, the time to get there goes down. And on the other hand, if the speed goes down, the time to get there goes up. See how they're related in the opposite, and that means inverse. The number of people that share a pizza, okay, and it, any item, but a pizza sounded good to me. So the number of people that share a pizza the amount each person will get. So if you've got more people in the room that want to eat that pizza, the smaller your piece, right? So the number of people goes up, the size of your piece of pizza goes down. The cost of gas and the amount of leisure travel, right? The more gas goes up, the less people travel. 
percentage, here we go with social distancing, the percentage of social distancing a person adheres to, the chances of contracting a community virus. So the more social distancing protocol you use, the less of a chance of getting a virus. At least that's how it's supposed to work, right? So those are called inverse variation. Now how it's related is y equals k over x. Now that x may be raised to some power, true with direct variation as well. Most of the problems that you have in the homework, there's no exponent, but there may be. Okay, so that's why this n is in the problem on both of them. But what I want you to think about here is division. Now the k always goes in the numerator, no, no matter if it's inverse or direct. What matters is where the x goes. So the x is multiplied for direct and it's divided for inverse. Then you have this weird thing called joint variation and that's more than one type of variation. So you have maybe three variables going on and one variable is direct, the other variable is inverse related. But I don't think you have any of that to deal with in your homework. Therefore, you won't see any on the test. But I threw that in there just in case because when you take Math 112, a pre-calculus class, you might run into it in that class. Okay, let's do some problems. Okay, so for our first problem, notice the directions say set up and solve the following variation problems. The top of every page that I show you is going to say that. So we're going to solve the problem. This one says if y varies directly, okay, super important, if y varies directly as x and y equals 3 when x equals 10, find the equation that relates x and y. So important stuff here, we have direct variation. It will tell you in the problem. There will be no guessing. They'll tell you. Now, for the formula for direct variation says you use your variables, it's y and x in this case, and remember the formula for direct is y equals direct is multiply, so the k always goes there no matter, this is always how you start. You, you might have different variables though, and then when it says directly, you multiply times x. If it said inversely, we would divide by x instead, so that's where we start. Then they give us this extra information that we need to plug in because your goal, your next goal is to solve for k. You're always trying to find k to get started, okay? So first you write your formula down. Next, you're going to solve for k, but you can't solve unless you have some values, right? So they tell us that y is 3, so I'm going to plug in 3 right there for that y value. When x is 10, so I'm going to plug in 10 for the x value. So you ready? We have y is 3, so that's going to be 3 equals, we don't know k, that's what we're going to find in a minute, times 10. Now you know that's the same as saying 3 is equal to 10k. We're used to our variables being in the back. And I say our variable, our variable in this case is k. Although k is a constant, we're just trying to figure out what it is. Now to solve for k, no matter which way you write it, you divide both sides by 10, right? We're trying to get the k by itself. The 10's cancel. So what have we learned? We've learned that k is equal to 3 tenths. Is that okay? Is it okay to get a fraction? You bet. Okay. Now, once you solve for k, you are not finished. To write the equation, you go back where you began, right up here, and plug in what k is. So the final answer in this case is going to be y equals k is 3 tenths x. Now is it okay to write that as a decimal? Eh, not for me. I'd rather you not. 3 tenths is perfectly fine as a decimal. It's 0 0.3 times x. And if you don't have to round at all, then I think a decimal is fine. Be careful with your homework. I really don't know if a decimal is appropriate or not in the homework. I always put fractions um, a lesson said is write it as a decimal. Um, a fraction, it can be written without rounding as long as it's in lowest terms. So just be careful, follow the directions. Uh, so y equals 3 tenths x is an equation that relates x and y. So again, first step, write your formula, whether it's direct or inverse. Second, plug in the values they gave you. Solve for k and then go back to the equation as your fourth step and plug what k is into the equation, okay?
All right, for example, b, y varies directly as x. And when y equals 12, x is 4, find the equation. So again, super important stuff here, directly. And all we're doing is finding the equation. We will have problems in the future that we have to solve for a certain value, but it still requires all these steps and an extra step. So very directly, now notice our variables are y and x. So I write the direct formula, which is y equals k times, direct means multiply x. So that's the formula I'm working with. Next, I'm going to solve for k, but to do that, I've got to plug in values. Notice it says y equals 12, so there's 12. k goes right there, and then x we know is 4. Now, what do I do? I solve for k by dividing both sides by 4. I'm trying to get that k by itself. So 12 divided by 4, we know is 3 is k. So now I have my k value. Now, to finish up, I'm going to write the equation. And the equation is, you go back where you started, y equals, you plug in k, which is 3 times x. And that is my equation. And then we're done with that problem. That's exactly what you would type in to the homework. Now for our third example, it says the number of calories C burned varies directly with the amount of time T spent exercising. Arnold burned 312 calories in 65 minutes of exercising. And notice this is not written as explicit as the other ones, but listen, all your information is right there. Don't let the words in this problem throw you off. So what's important? Varies directly. That's important. Now normally we would use the formula y equals k times x, but look, they want us to use c and t in our problem instead. It says, so the number of calories c, so I start with c equals still k, that's your constant of variation, directly means you multiply times time. Okay, so there's our formula. Then you remember to solve for k, you need some values to plug in. So it says Arnold burned 312 calories. Now the question is, is that c or is that t? Well, calories c is what this is, so I plug 312 in for c. So 312 is equal to k is what we don't know yet. Now the time, it says in 65 minutes of exercising, so times 65. Now remember, our, our ultimate goal is to solve for k and write a formula, okay? So the 65's cancel. Now I'm going to use my calculator to do 312 divided by 65, and I get 4.8. Now I gave you all that speech about, about decimals. Um, you know, you could reduce 312 over 65. There may be some common factors there. Um, you could try writing this as a decimal. I don't really, I, you know, I don't think there's any problem writing as a decimal, as long as you don't have to round. Let's leave this one as a decimal, okay? So here we go. We have C, this is our equation, C equals K, which is 4.8 times T. Now it says write the equation. That is the equation, okay? So if I write it here, C equals 4.8 times T. That's our equation. But then it asks for more goes on to say, how many calories would he burn if he exercises for 90 minutes? So it, this time, it wants us to use our formula, which you always have to find that first, to calculate how many calories he would burn, right? So we're looking for C. We don't know C. T is the 90 minutes. So here I go. C is equal to 4.8. Remember, that's the decimal, not rounded, times 90. So I type in 4.8 times 90 in my calculator, stand by, and I get 432 calories. And that answers the second question. All right, let's try another one of these. The distance a moving body travels D varies directly with time T it moves. Then it says a train travels 100 miles in two hours. Write the equation. So very first step is to write the equation. But now remember, to write an equation, you have to solve for k. So where do we start? Directly. And then what are our two variables? d and t. So d varies directly, which means multiply, 
with T. That's always how you have to start. Then you need to work on solving for K so you can write an equation. So then you're going to have to have values. You're going to have to have a D value and a T value. And it says that travels 100 miles. That's D, right? That's distance. T is in two hours. So I have 100 for D equals K times 2. Now to solve for K, we divide both sides by 2. Notice these steps are the same every time. The 2's cancel. 100 divided by 2 is 50 equals K, which means my equation, I go right back to the equation and plug in K. So I have D is equal to 50T. So that answers the, equation, the question, what is the equation? D is equal to 50T. Done, right? Then how many miles would it travel in 5 hours? So now, they want us to do something different. They want us to find how many miles. That's our D, right? We don't know D. 5 hours is our T. So I have D equals 50 times 5. And we know 50 times 5. If you need to type that in your calculator, do. Hopefully you don't. That's 250. 250 what? 250 miles. And we're finished with that problem. All right, so for example A, the distance an object falls is directly proportional to the square of the time. Now that's new, right? So we're doing directly, which means multiply. We've got distance. It didn't tell us what variables to use, but why don't we use D for distance? So D equals K. That's where you would start no matter what type of variation problem you have. But it says to the square of time. Now time, let's call it t. Now if you square time, that's what it looks like, right? That's t squared. So this is an unusual one where you have your variable raised to a power. So be really careful when you read these. Um, then it goes on to say, okay, a ball falls 144 feet in 3 seconds. That's how we're going to solve for k. So falls 144 feet, that's distance, right? So I have 144 equals k times and then t squared. Now what's t? Three seconds. But don't forget because it relates to the square of time, we've got to square it. So now I have 144. I'm trying to solve for k, right? This is k. Well, three squared we know is nine. And then to solve for k, I divide both sides of this equation by nine. 144 divided by nine. I do believe that goes in there evenly, but in my head, I don't know how many times. And it is 16. So you have 16 is equal to K. So that's your K value. Remember what you do when you find K. Go back and plug that in your equation. So now our equation is D equals 16 T squared. So that answers the first question. That's your equation. Okay. Then it goes on to ask a second question. How far will an object fall in four seconds? So what are you looking for? You're looking for how far will it fall, that's D, and 4 seconds is your time T, right? So I plug that in this equation, D equals 16, and I'm supposed to do 4 squared. Why the parentheses? Because I need to distinguish the difference here. I'm multiplying those together. If I didn't put the 4 there, it would look like 164 squared. I mean the parentheses there, okay? So that gives me 16 times 16. A lot of you know what 16 times 16 is. I'm going to type it in just to be certain I don't miss it. 256. Now that's my D value. Notice that D was in feet earlier, so this is also in feet. Okay, so in 4 seconds, this object is going to fall 256 feet. Kind of getting the hang of it now? Okay, let's change things up a little bit. It says if P varies inversely this time, brand new problem, inversely with Q, and P equals 30, when Q equals 12, find the equation. So this time again, all we got to do is find the equation. But we're working inversely this time. So what are our variables? P and Q. So P varies. This is always where you start. But inversely means you divide. So I divide by Q instead of multiplying by Q. And that's the only difference between direct and inverse. And it's going to tell you whether it's direct or inverse, but you could always apply this to problems that don't tell you because you know how they relate. Remember, direct means if one value goes up, the other value goes up. 
inverse means if one value goes up, the other value goes down, right? So let's plug in P and Q. P is 30. So I have 30 equals K divided by Q, which is 12. Remember, your goal is still the same. We want to solve for K. But this time, instead of dividing both sides by 12, we're going to multiply both sides by 12. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it over there on the side. So in my calculator, I'm going to type 12 times 30. I shouldn't need to do that. It should be 360, and it is. Okay, so I got 360 is equal to, remember those 12's canceled, K. So now I have my K value. Now we write the equation. You go back right where you started and plug in your K. So always find K first. So we have 360 over Q. And that's my equation. And since that's, that's all this problem asked for, we are done with this. If y varies inversely with x and y equals 8 when x equals 2, find the equation. So what's again important stuff? Varies inversely, and in the end, all we're looking for is an equation. So let's pay attention to our variables. It says if y varies inversely with x. So y varies. Always where we start. Inversely means you divide by x. It says y is 8, so I'm going to plug in 8 equals k. Remember, we don't know what k is, that's what we're looking for, and x is 2. Always given information. Okay, so y equals 8, x equals 2. I'm going to solve for k by multiplying both sides of this equation by 2 to get rid of the 2 and get the k by itself. Okay, so 2 times 8 on the left is 16. The 2's cancel on the right to give me k. Don't stop there, because that's never the answer. Then you have y equals, plug back into our equation, k is 16 over x. And all they wanted was the equation. There it is. Car's value varies inversely with his age. Important stuff, inversely. Okay. Now, they didn't give us any variables, right? So a car's value, why don't we call that v? varies inversely with his age. How about A? You like it? Okay, so let's write an equation. V varies, and then inversely means you divide, right? So over A. Then the next step is to find K. So we always have to be given some information, which is right here, to find K. So it says Elena bought a two-year-old car. That's your age, right? That's your A value is two. For $20,000, that's your V value. So I have 20,000 equals K is the value we're looking for over A, which is 2. To solve this equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And that's going to give me 40,000 on the left equals the 2's cancel, K on the right. So I go back and plug that in, V for value equals our constant of variation, which is 40,000 for K. And because it's inverse, we're dividing um, over A. That's our equation. That answers that question. And then it goes on to say, what will be the value of Elena's car when it is five years old? So we're looking for value, right? We don't know the value V equals 40,000. And your A is your age is five. We just type that in our calculator, V equals 40,000 divided by 5, and I get 8,000. Now, what units is that? Well, that's a dollar amount, right, because it's the value. So, V equals $8,000, and that answers the second question. Let's do one more problem and call this video done. And our last problem, the force needed to break a board varies inversely with its length. Richard uses 24 pounds of pressure to break a two-foot long board. Notice it asks for two things. We're supposed to write the equation, and that's after you solve for K and you put the K back in. And then how many pounds of pressure is needed to break a five-foot long board? Okay, so the force needed to break a board varies inversely. So we know we're dividing. We need some variables. You want to use F for force, and then L for length. That's entirely up to you now, but, I, you know, <laughs> the most obvious choices, I think, is a good way to go. So, here we go with our formula. It says the force needed varies inversely with the length. So, you start with your equation. Force varies 
okay? Now, inversely means you divide by the other variable, which we called L for length. I made it curvy L so it doesn't look like a 1. Okay, now next step, you need to plug in values for F and L so we can solve for K to create our equation. So it says 24 pounds of pressure. That's your force, okay? And then a 2-foot long board, that's your length. So you have 24 for force is equal to K divided by 2 feet for the length. Now to solve for k, we've got to get rid of that 2, right? So we need to multiply both sides of our equation by 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on the right, and I'm required to multiply 2 on the left to balance that out. Of course, the 2's on the right cancel to leave me with just k. And then on the left side, I have 2 times 24, which we know is 48. So now I know my k is 48. So when I answer this question above, to write the equation for variation, that is this equation right here with k plugged in. So I have force is equal to k, which is 48, divided by L. That's my equation. Now to answer the second question, how many pounds of pressure, we could call force P, because pressure is used a lot, is needed to break a five foot long board. So you will notice that five feet long, that's your L, the length of your board, and how many pounds of pressure, that's your F or your force is what we're looking for. So now I have force is equal to 48 divided by L, which is five in this case. Now, five doesn't go into 48 evenly, so the question is, how do they want the answer? Um, it will probably say round to a certain place, then you always know that decimals are, you know, okay. Let me say it that way. And I'm dividing 48 divided by 5. Now, when I type that in my calculator, I get 9.6. That's not rounded at all, which makes it an appropriate answer, unless it said it had to be in a fraction form. And it's 9.6 what? Well, pounds, because remember, our force was in pounds. So 9.6 pounds of pressure to break a 5-foot board. But remember, you needed 24 pounds of pressure to break a 2-foot board. That might kind of make sense, doesn't it? That the shorter the board, the harder you would have to push to break that thing. Um, so if you have a longer board, you know, if you picture kicking a board, that seems to make perfectly good sense. And again, that's an inverse related or an inverse variation. I hope that gives you what you need to do well on these problems. Please let me know if you have any questions or you need to see anything extra. Hope you have a wonderful day.